Hi everyone, you're welcome back and I told you that my guest is one pretty beautiful lady, woman of God. <laughs> Pastor Manuela Izumwa, she's my sister, she's my friend, she's my gist partner. Uh, what else now? Everything. Everything. Planning partner. The planning partner, in oh, fact. Very and we have, we have a very important plan yes. right now, right? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and um, today we're talking about, you know, how to be a Christian as a pastor's wife. And you understand why I'm asking that question, yeah, right? I do. Because it's do. possible to be a pastor's wife and you're really not a Christian. Yeah. Explain. Yeah. Can you? Let's, let's talk about that. Fact, a let's, bit. let's just say, let's start with the fact that some people um, didn't even know God before and mm -hmm. somehow they got married, the man became a pastor. But that's not my concern right now. I'm talking right. of those who were actually Christians and as they got into the office and they came with some of its perks and challenges. Its pros and its cons. Pros and cons. Before long, <laughs> they have lost it. <laughs> they won't be those ones in Jesus' name. Amen. If Amen. ask God for mercy because it's yeah. not easy. And sometimes the church needs to know that if they're not careful, they can also lose their pastors and their pastors wives with the things they do hmm. so you know as you're saying this um, i remember many years ago what used to cross my mind the story of moses god called moses god told him that he needed him to help him bring his people out of the land of egypt and while on the journey to the promised land the people became moses problem and because of the people moses could not enter the promised land exactly Moses couldn't enter the promised land because of his anger. And you know, sometimes as pastor's wives, something probably will happen and you get angry, you have to deal with it. But at the end of the day, we have to live as Christians, as wives of the pastor. You know, I don't know what your own experience has been, but I've, I've had those experiences where, um, like you, I think you said that earlier, which is people that you've brought so close, you've loved them, you've you've given your heart to them. I don't know if it's your experience, but I find that the people you help the most are the people that hurt the most. Yes, that's how it is actually, because you become vulnerable right. to them. You open yourself up and you don't hold any bars back, nothing, and then all of a sudden, they turn their back. You know, there's once I said to someone that it's like, they drop you like a hot potato as though you burnt them. Yes. Meanwhile, some of them were probably at ground zero when you they met with met you. you. I picked them up, cleaned mm -hmm. them up, supported them. Now they're standing, in fact, they're flying and they, they forget. And they forget completely. So I think that's yes. a point I want us to talk about. When you find yourself in that space where you're giving your best, and then the person drops you off as, as a hot potato. How do you deal with your emotions at that moment? Because I don't know about you, but this is my experience. I don't know how to relate with people from my head. I relate with my heart. I relate with my soul. Um, even my PA knows if I'm upset, you will know. I, I, I can't pretend, I'm not hypocritical. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not that diplomatic. And I try not to be because Jesus, I mean, Paul was writing to the Roman church and he said, let love be without dissimulation. Yes. Let it be without hypocrisy. So I, I choose not to be hypocritical. So if I'm not happy, I let you know, but I may not necessarily fight with you or mm -hmm. you know, rub it in, but you've got to know that I'm hurting here. But it seems that sometimes we're not even permitted to allow our hurt to show. Yeah, sometimes. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with how do you deal with these kinds of situations yourself? I've learned I've learned for me everything is going back to God. Come on. It's always going back to God because I mean there's I, I if I as we're talking now, mm -hmm. I don't even want to remember. Some. I don't want to remember I know. some of the things that have happened. I know. But anyway, the question was how do you cope? How do you live as a Christian, live, yeah. as a wife of the pastor? Mm. Because the wife of, being the wife of the pastor is an assignment. You, you, yeah. you, it's a function, really. It's not really a ministry, but it's a function you perform in the house of God. But at the same time, you must also exhibit your Christianity. But sometimes the situations around you makes it a little difficult, difficult. when they're loving on your husband and they're not loving on you. Don't worry. We shouldn't go there. No, not at all. <laughs> well, there's, it's always back to the scripture. The Bible right. says everything you do, do as unto the Lord. The Lord, absolutely. Um, the kindness we show, the, the goodness we display, mm -hmm. our generosity, our patience, right. everything we do is not to those people actually. We're doing it to God. 
Right. And once we have that at the back of our mind and we know that our reward will come from him, somehow we are able to bear. There's, in our, our early years of marriage, mm -hmm. the very beginning, it was my, tough. Not only being tough, is we don't have, and yet my husband fe was felt so compelled to help people. And we will help send people to school as soon as they finish. That's it, the jackman. Not even a thank you. Not even a goodbye. Not a goodbye. I know. Nothing. I wonder, I asked him, I said, why are we doing this? It's not, it's like you're not, we're not doing it to them. To them. We're doing it for God. And we have children too. We are believing God that we're sowing seeds that our children, our children's children will, reap. will also come to reap. Mm -hmm. So because I know that God is faithful and somehow he brings it around, and thank God he's merciful, so he brings the good ones around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I yeah, know. I know that we don't lose out in the long run. But some, if you're there physically, you feel that. In that moment. Yes, you're, you, you're you feel cheated and betrayed. And I think that's painful. a word, really. Cheated and betrayed. Yeah. And sometimes you feel cheated of your time because you, you deny yourself, yourself some things to make sure that others are okay. And then, when, like you said, when they get okay, they go. They just go. You know, so um, let's talk about the fruit of the spirit. Because if you're a pastor's wife and you want to live like a Christian, then the fruit of the spirit has got to be one of the cardinal um, templates that you must apply to your life. Yes. You know, the fruit of being, being loving and, and loving the unlovable, being patient, even though your patience is being tried, <laughs> being joyful. joyful. Well, that, I, th I think solo? that's... I, Oh, I think that's the I think that's the main thing. And you see, I think when we can we can take on the fruit of joy, we defeat the enemy there because that's actually where he defeats many pastors' yes. wives. He, he defeats us in the place of our joy, and you find that she's always looking sad, always looking dreary, always looking like the world is on her shoulders. But if she can capture joy in spite of everything, you know, our lives become, you know, way better. And I just want to add here that um, sometimes we are not sufficient in ourselves right uh, and i believe we we all need somebody the somebody doesn't necessarily need to be your spouse mm -hmm. may not even be your children but you should have a support system come on you should have a place where you can vent a place where you can cry a place where you can just l point you can all play. out and play you know and Assure yourself that you're not going mad. And you're not alone. You're not alone. And what's happening is not peculiar. peculiar to because you. Exactly, yes. because sometimes we feel that it's peculiar to us, but it's really not peculiar. I went, and you see, Satan has so many tricks. This Bible is rich. You know, that's what happened to Elijah. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one left. God and said, God, kill me. <laughs> kill me. I said, you're not the only one. You have and over 7,000. And depression had come in. Right. So we need to be able to go back to the world and remember who we are. And I think that's one thing we, we, we forget. Circumstances make, f we, we, we get, um, we, they, we, somehow it's as if we are boxed in, bo not just boxed in, as if we are being made to conform to a particular Yes. Format. Format. Yes. Yeah, like they There's say that the pastor's wife is like a fish in a bowl. Yes. There's a particular way you ought to look. There's a particular way you ought to behave. There's a, a particular way you ought to speak. And then when and you don't, then you f they and you be you yourself. Mm -hmm. They are aggressive towards you. Some people reject you. But you can't reject yourself. Right. You can't. Right. You have to love right. yourself. You have to... You have to believe that even if you're not perfect, but you're work in progress and believe that tomorrow will also be better. I think you're not alone, sister. We are here. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Have you, as a, as, a, as a wife of a pastor, have you made a particular mistake that you've turned around and said to yourself, ah, I shouldn't have done this as a pastor's wife? Many. No, just mention one. I know there are many. So maybe the question was just a bit too bogus, but just let me know one, because as, I, as one, I'm speaking, I'm remembering one. One of mine is even recent, was I was angry with someone. Okay. Very, very angry. And even though I didn't 
insult him because I can't tell you you're stupid. But if I say, are you stupid? It's almost, <laughs> it's almost, you know, the, same almost the same thing. That's a British way of doing yes. it, right? <laughs> so but I didn't say, are you stupid? But I, I said something like, oh, this is really irresponsible and so on. And he was still, he was working at it actually. But the thing hadn't worked. But what annoyed me was that he mentioned, I think that was what really got me really angry, that it wasn't even him, it's somebody else that should have done it. Right. I said, how can you be there and something is going wrong and you're telling me that somebody else could have done it? And I got very angry and rebuked him and, you know, I also, God said, now, why were you angry now? Mm -hmm. So I now sent him an apology. Right. I sent him a text to apologize. I shouldn't have spoken to you. I'm sorry. And I also said that I'm really frustrated that I have to keep repeating this same Myself. thing over and over again. And it's bad when you've talked about something so many times and then in the midst of a public program, that same mistake is playing out. It's playing out. It's, it's not nice. So, well, he didn't reply me. I don't know. I sent him, he still didn't upset. come. <laughs> and he's really angry. Well, and, and okay, so this is a classical situation. How do you manage it? Another thing, another area was where early days, I used to think it was my responsibility to change people. <laughs> Until the Lord spoke to me and said to me, it's not your responsibility, it's the responsibility of the Holy Spirit yes, to, change, to people. change people. And one of the ways you can do that is by being an example for them to see. If your life is an example, then they can be impacted by it. That's but don't try, right. yeah, so don't try to change anybody. Um, give counsel where you can. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to throw counsel around to everybody, mm -hmm. but I've learned, you know. Unsolicited uh, advice. Yes, when unsolicited, advice. exactly. So don't give anybody unsolicited advice. Don't accept they're the kind of people that listen, uh, have an ear to, to listen to you. And I've also learned that even though I'm the pastor's wife and I'm mommy, I may not necessarily be mommy to everybody, yeah. but my, my responsibility is to love everybody. Yeah. I know those who see me as their, their mom. spiritual mom, mm -hmm. and then I give them that. Otherwise, just allow people to sit under the word, and the word has a power to yeah, change, change people. Yeah. So in that era, I made so many mistakes as a younger you know, wife of the pastor. But this I mean, point you made is a real critical point, and I think it will help a lot of pastor's wives to yeah, understand yeah. that because even though it's funny in church you know they will accept pastor they call him daddy yeah and actually receive him as their father in the lord but they don't receive the pastor's wife really as their mother in the, in the lord, lord. Mm -hmm. they know it's their pastor's wife it's daddy's wife right. it's almost as if um is the stepmother <laughs> <laughs> yes, to some of the people, we are almost like, like a stepmother step -mother. to them because the father is accepted completely. completely. But the mother came as an, an attachment. attachment. Yeah, that's the wife came as an attachment. So they, are, they don't they don't look at her as if she's the one who or she has anything to to invest best. in them. So anything she's doing is through it's like through daddy. Yes. You know, and then they, they make you feel that way. So the question is, how do I comport myself in that kind of situation? I mean, for me, I got to the point where I had to own myself yeah. and realize that, I mean, someone said to me something and it, it hit me in a very, it hit me in a good place or bad place. I don't even know where, <laughs> you, you know, but for many years, I, I, I used to think that because he's a pastor, and I was a pastor before we got married, so I didn't become a pastor because I married a pastor. I was ordained before I got married to a pastor. And um, I thought that, okay, he's your right. Yes, I, I thought it was a right. And then someone says to me, they don't see you as their pastor. He is their, their pastor. pastor. It was a bitter pill to swallow, yeah. but I realized that's true. Mm -hmm. Because it's even clear, there can't be two heads, exactly. right? So you are a pastor, pastor. but he is the their pastor. pastor. But you can, you can find yourself if you grow and with meet, them and yeah, minister to, to them, them yeah. and become a blessing to, to them, them, then they can identify your ministry separate, separate from yes, his. So exactly. that's where the assignment is. Yeah. So that's where my Christianity must come to bear, mm. where I find myself, you've got to minister to them. Yeah. You've got to be a blessing to them. They've got to see you 
but you can't also be an Absalom because no, that's no, another no. mistake. Holy Ghost fire. Uh -huh. You can't be an Absalom where you now want to take, take the attention of the people yeah, you toward sub. yourself or usurp authority. So, I mean, there's so much to talk about, so you know, much, being a Christian so as, much, so as a pastor's wife. And sometimes, did you ever struggle with your prayer life? St yes. Struggle with your quiet, quiet time? time? Struggle, no, struggle with I doubt? I've, I've, yeah, <laughs> I've, you know me now. I, 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 I was doubt personified. I do, and then... I don't know how to put it. Sometimes you're asking, are you doing enough? In fact, I was once in church. I I, I used to be a hands-on person. I right. like working, physically arranging things. And then, you know, they now put you on this pedestal. Oh, you mama, can't don't do anything. this. Right. Mama, don't do that. I said, One day I had to come to church and say, please, if you see me with broom, just leave, leave me. me alone. I know you can sweep, but me too, I can. Right. And if I'm holding it, then there's a reason why, why I'm, holding, I'm it. holding it. Unless you know that the face is not looking fine. So maybe I should have, um, I've been rebuking something and then you want to now, mm -hmm. maybe like that, leave me alone. Leave me, let me serve too. Right. Let me serve. Right. So sometimes they put you up there. When you stay where they put you, they complain that you're up there. You come down, they say, oh, Jesus I Christ. Know, I know, I know. Help us, Lord. <laughs> Well, for those of you who are just, you know, who have joined us up until this point, this is Walking the Talk with me here, Pastor Chinelo Dilimono, and I'm with my sister, my friend, my gist partner, my plan partner, my play partner, <laughs> Pastor Manuela Izumwa. And I'm so privileged. <laughs> and it's been an amazing time just talking about how to be a Christian as the wife of the pastor. Because it's also possible for you to be the pastor's wife and your Christianity is not being exhibited. Don't allow what goes on around you to now define who you are or begin to make you act outside who you really are. So like I would tell every pastor's wife, and if you're watching, or if you're a pastor's wife, you're, um, you're not a pastor's wife, but you're listening, maybe share this video with her to listen to it. Be yourself. Allow God to use you with the strengths he's given and the weaknesses he's given right yeah. if you have a one word you want to say to them as one, we close today um, there's one thing um, paul said he said um, god forbid that after having preached he too will become a castaway cast it is actually possible for you to be in god's service and still end up in hell Hmm. And that's something that terrifies me. Right. Which really terrifies me. Right. So I, I want to encourage you to make sure that you're always rapturable. Hmm. It's not worth it keeping the hurt. It's not worth it keeping all the pain in your heart. They disrespected you. Forgive them. They it comes with the territory. You. Forgive mm -hmm. them. It comes with the territory. They, they're just, just a footmat. Forgive them. They lied against you. Forgive them. They misconstrued what you said. Forgive them. Please, just remember the fruits of the Spirit and just ask yourself, is it manifesting now? Mm -hmm. If it's not, ask manifest. the Holy Spirit to help you. And get back in place. And now that it's, I've said that, that, that triggers something. Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. Talk to him about everything. Tell him how you feel. Tell him, don't, don't try to paint a picture or try to impress God. He knows us more than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. So don't try to impress God. Just say to God, say to the Lord, talk to the Holy Spirit as it is in your heart. And he knows how to turn our situations around. Thank you, Pastor Manuel. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. One more this time, has been such five. an yes. encouraging time, even for me, wow. and refreshing. Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you. And bless you your tribe <laughs> thank you all thank you so much so just in case you haven't subscribed till now please do click on the subscription button click 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 and then the notification bell click. so that every time we upload a new video every week you'll be amongst the first persons to know and help us to build a community of kingdom people who love jesus who talk jesus and who walk jesus Amen. i love you all and the lord bless you